Good morning, church. I'm Remy Shores, my pronouns are they, them, and it's my honor and privilege this morning to welcome you to Plymouth Church, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. Let us respond together to the God who calls us to worship. Today is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let us pray together. God of new life, imaginative creator and author of Easter, you opened the tomb and conquered the power of death with the strength of your perfect love. Hallowed be your name. We confess that we have failed to be faithful to you. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your compassion, forgive us for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. As we gather to worship together, teach us to love more perfectly that we might become a new creation. Renew us and shape us into Easter people who know you and love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Church, as we continue together the faithful work of becoming Easter people, may you be assured that the God who began this good work in you will continue it to completion. Be assured that God's love is real, God's love is for you, and God's love is worth it. Amen.
You are welcome here. In many parts of the world, a pineapple is a sign of welcome. Some people have a pineapple carved into the entry of their home. Others have brass door knockers in the shape of a pineapple attached to their doors. Pineapples are sometimes carved into the design of tables and beds. Long ago, before there were airplanes, pineapple, which grew in tropical climates, was not available to most people in the world. Explorers returning from a voyage sometimes brought a pineapple to their king, and sailors fastened a pineapple to their gatepost when they returned from sea. As a result of these customs, the pineapple became a sign of welcome. There are many kinds of welcomes. Perhaps you wave, smile, and say hi to a friend. When you go to your grandparents' house, the welcome might be hugs and kisses. Your family might take a bouquet of flowers to a new neighbor. All these things are done to make others feel accepted and comfortable. We especially want others to feel accepted and welcome here. The Bible tells us that whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. When we make someone feel comfortable and accepted, we are sharing the love of Jesus. Well, our children certainly are welcome here, and um, we are just blessed to be able to worship in music today as all of our um, choirs from kindergarten through 12th grade lead us um, with music this morning. And there is also a nursery on the first floor for children through age three, a church school class for three-year-olds to kindergartners, and then another church school class on the third floor for first through sixth graders if there are any children here today who may need to get the wiggles out and prefer to spend time um, in um, doing some, some uh, spiritual education. So if uh, there are any of those who would prefer that, we invite you to follow our teachers into the hallway at this time.
Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16 say, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not, do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. There's a light that shines in the darkness. There's a destiny waiting at the end of the road. There's meaning in the middle of this emptiness. There's a reason you've been asked to carry this heavy load. Lessons are taught when we reach out farther than we thought we'd ever dare. Faith abounds when we confront our deepest doubts, enduring more than we dreamed we could ever bear. There's a dawn waiting at the edge of every midnight. There's a seed planted with every fallen leaf. With every wrong, there's a chance to make a right. With every hour of suffering, there's an eternity of relief. Our darkest moments give us the opportunity for seasons of our greatest growth. Every day, we work towards continuity of acceptance and persistent hope. And there is a light that shines in the darkness. There's a star that guides the way. There's a gate that's open to forgiveness. There's a shepherd who saves those who've gone astray.
Ubuntu. I am because we are. One day, an anthropologist went to a South African community to study the social behavior of an indigenous tribe. He proposed a game to the children, and they willingly agreed to be part of it. He put a basket filled with fruits underneath a tree, and he told the children that whoever would reach the basket first would win the whole basket and could eat all the fruits all by themselves. He lined them all up, and he raised his hand to give the start signal. Ready, set, go. The children took each other's hands, and they started running together. They all reached the basket at the same time. Then they sat down in a big circle and enjoyed the fruits together, laughing and smiling all the time. The anthropologist could not believe what he saw, and he asked them why they had waited for each other, as one could have taken the whole basket all for themselves. The children shook their heads and replied, Ubuntu, how can one of us be happy if all the others are sad? Desmond Tutu explains Ubuntu with these words. One of the sayings in our country is Ubuntu, the essence of being human. Ubuntu speaks particularly about the fact that you cannot exist as a human being in isolation. It speaks about our interconnectedness. You can't be human all by yourself. And when you have this quality, Ubuntu, you are known for your generosity. We think of ourselves far too frequently as just individuals separated from one another, whereas you are connected and what you do affects the whole world. A person with Ubuntu is open and available to others. Affirming of others does not feel threatened that others are able and good. For they have a proper self-assurance that comes from knowing that they belong in a greater whole and they are diminished when others are humiliated or diminished, when others are tortured or oppressed. What a better world it would be if there were more people with Ubuntu. Tremendous things come about in life when we are willing to watch out for the benefit of the entire group rather than focusing on the benefit to ourselves. None of us exists in isolation in this world. We are all interconnected, and we all have so much value we can bring to one another's lives if we are willing to.
Hey church, once again, we are so glad you are here this morning. And since you made your way here, we would love it if you would let us know that you're here. Let us know who you are. One of the ways you can do that is by checking in on our Church Center app. If you haven't gotten that app yet, there is a QR code in the bulletin that will help you download it. Um, or if that's not your thing, you can swing by our welcome desk and check in up there. If you are new to Plymouth Church, um, one of the ways you can check in is with our green sheets. Those are in the pew back in front of you. Um, you can fill those out and let us know who you are. Those sheets are ongoing and open streams of communication between you and our church. You can use them to let us know how we can pray for you, what questions you might have, how we can get in touch with you during the week. Church, we do a lot of life together. And our life together is in service of growing in love of God, neighbor, and creation. One of the ways we're doing that this afternoon, after our 11 a.m. service, is with our Eating Better Together program. Um, we'll be in Waveland around 1215, and we'll learn about how to create meals that are good for our bodies, that are affordable for our budgets, and that are good for the earth that God made. We have a lot of programming for children and families here at Plymouth, including some summer programs coming up, and the registration deadline for those summer programs is coming up at the end of this month. So now is the time to get registered for VBS and for Creative Arts Camp. You won't want to miss out. We also have a lot of music and arts programs coming up this month, including programs with the Des Moines Vocal Arts Ensemble and the University of Iowa Choir. The schedule and the tickets and all the details that you need for that are on the back of your bulletin, so make sure you keep that bulletin with Plymouth News on it. And speaking of university, we want to help pay for that. Plymouth scholarships are available, and there are not many applicants, so we have money. We want to give it away. We want to give it away to you or any students that you know. The deadline is Monday. That's tomorrow. So, like, this weekend, right now, is the time to fill out those applications for Plymouth scholarships. Finally, our Cuba partnership team is organizing another trip to Cuba in 2025. There's going to be an informational meeting about that next week at 12.30 p.m., so after that 11 a.m. service. Details on that, again, are in your bulletin. And there is so much more here than I have had time to say, so please take this home, put it on your fridge, mark it up, take notes on your calendar. You don't want to miss out on the life we live together, which is a fulsome life. And we are blessed to live it together. And a lot of things make that possible. One of the things that make it possible is money. Ministry is not about money, but money does make it go. And in addition to living this life together, we are blessed to fund it together. We're invited now to share from God's resources using the QR code in your bulletin if you want to give online. Or physical gifts can be placed in the plates when they come by.
Let us pray. God, behind every joyful song and celebration, we give you thanks for the music in our hearts and in our ears. Remind us today of the importance of joining our voices together and becoming more than we can ever be on our own. We ask that the gifts and resources shared in this hour be used to bring your goodness into being so that good songs and songs of justice and joy and hope might be known because of our spiritual acts of generosity, compassion, and love. In giving of ourselves for the sake of others, we remember Christ, who taught us what it means to give selflessly, giving for the benefit of all. We also remember how Christ taught us to pray boldly, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, before we sing our final hymn, know this. You are an Easter people. May you go and bring joy and hope wherever you are. Or, in the words of Leonard Bernstein, may you go and make music more intensely, more beautifully, and more devotedly than ever. Amen. Amen. 